Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum ascending subarray sum. Surprisingly an easy problem today, but I'm recording this in advance, so I don't know when this is actually gonna be the daily problem, but in this problem we are given an input array. So let's consider the first example. Let's say this is the input array. What we want to do is find the subarray, which is basically just a contiguous part of the original array, maybe the entire thing, maybe just a single element, maybe this part. And we wanna identify the subarray such that we maximize the entire subarray sum. So if you look at this subarray, for example, the entire sum is gonna be 60, 10 plus 20 plus 30. Or maybe you could look at this subarray over here, which is gonna be five plus 10 plus 50. That's gonna be 65. So this is bigger than this one. And if you look at the output for this example, 65 is the result. That is actually the subarray that we want to identify. And the reason for that is, the reason we can't just take the entire subarray is because we want to ensure that for the subarray that we choose, in this case, uh, this one, that the elements are in strictly increasing order. They use the word ascending order. So five is less than the next element, which is 10, which is less than the next element, which is 50. If we try to add the 30, we see that that no longer holds. We cannot include the 30. I mean, I guess we could include the 30 if we wanted to, but in that case, we couldn't include the next element and if we can't include the next element, then we kind of broke the contiguous part of this. So even though like you could get rid of these two elements and say, well, 50 is bigger than 30. Well, now it's not contiguous anymore. So you get rid of all of these and then you find, okay, well, maybe the previous elements before 30, well, yes, 20 is less than 30 and then 10 is less than 20. So this is a valid subarray, but the sum is 60. It's not maximal. We found the maximum subarray sum with the other subarray. So how do you approach this problem? Well, I think obviously there is a brute force solution and the brute force solution actually can lead you to the optimal solution. The brute force would look something like this where we would have a couple nested for loops and the overall time complexity would end up being n squared. It would look roughly like this where we start here, we're at 10. So we could say this is our current subarray sum. And then we just wanna expand as far right as we possibly can given this starting point. So we see, okay, 10, that's bigger. 30, that's bigger than the previous one. Five, okay, that's not quite bigger. So we have to stop here. This is the biggest one we could create starting from here. Now we could do something very, very naive. We could, with the brute force solution say, okay, that's the best I could do starting from here, but what's the best I could do starting from the second element? And that would be 20 and 30. So I, I wanna show you the repeated work. So this was the first iteration. And then next, I'm gonna do this 20 and 30, and I can't go any further. And then once again, I'm gonna try to find the biggest one starting from the third element. And not to my surprise, we still can't go any further. This one was 30. Okay, now we do the same thing starting from the next element, five, and then 10, and then 50. And then we really can't go any further because there aren't any more elements. We could do the same thing starting from this element, 10, 50, and then finally we get uh, the last element itself, which is just 50. I think this picture is in some ways enough to identify the repeated work. Specifically, it is this. If I start at an element and I can find elements that are in increasing order, well, I'm gonna do so. I'm gonna keep expanding as far as I can. And then this is my stopping point. I cannot go any further than that. In addition, we are guaranteed, this is very important, that every number in the input is going to be positive. So it's not like this was a negative 10. If this was a negative 10, that would have actually been a problem because then, yeah, maybe this subarray over here could have actually been bigger than this one. But given that all values are gonna be positive, that's not possible. How could the next subarray, which is definitely gonna end at the exact same position, gonna ever have a bigger sum than the one we already calculated? Well, it's not going to. So what exactly is the solution in this? Well, I wouldn't say it's precisely the sliding window uh, algorithm, but it does feel like a sliding window algorithm because what we're kind of doing is saying, this is our starting point, expand far to the right as you possibly can. And then you found the stopping point. Okay, can't go any further. So next for the starting point, we should shift it from here all the way to the next 
element because we can skip all of these subarrays. We already know all of them are going to have a smaller sum than the one we just calculated. We can skip those. And so the way we're going to implement this is not by actually having two pointers. That's why I'm saying it's not quite the sliding window algorithm. What we're really going to do is this. We're going to have a variable like the current sum, which is going to tell us what the current sum is. So first it'll be 10, then 10 plus 20, then 10 uh, plus 20 plus 30. So it'll be 60. At every step, we'll also maintain what the result is, which is going to be the maximum current sum that we've ever seen. Now, this is what we're going to do. Once we get to the stopping point, we're here, we go to the next element, we want to reset the current sum back down to zero and then add the next element. So then set it to be five. It's a brand new start. It's a fresh start for us here. And then we kind of do the same thing. We just expand next element plus 10. Next element is indeed bigger than this one. So plus 50. Remember, how did we identify the stopping point? Because the elements that are adjacent were not in increasing order. Five is not greater than 30. One tiny little edge case that I think is probably worth mentioning is how we're going to go about implementing this because at every step we are going to look at two adjacent elements. So if my pointer is over here, my I pointer, then I want to look at the previous element and just make sure this value is greater than the previous one. So the way I'm actually going to implement this uh, algorithm is like this. I'm going to have my current sum. Initially, I'm actually going to set it to the first value, which is going to be 10. And I'm also just going to set my result to that as well. I don't really need to initialize it to zero. I could, that'd probably be fine. But setting it to the first value is also fine. And then I'm actually not going to start my I pointer at the first element. I'm actually going to start it at the next element. So now I can compare this with the previous one and it's greater. So what I'm going to do is add a 20 to current. So now it'll be 30. I'm going to update my result. It's also 30. Now I'm going to move my I pointer here again, compare with the previous. It's bigger. So I add 30. Now my current is going to be 60. I can update the result as well. Next, my I pointer is going to be over here. I look at the previous element. It's not bigger. So now is when I reset. Now I can reset my current value back down to this. So it's going to be five. Now I could try to update my result but 60 is still the maximum that we've seen. And next, it's going to be a pretty quick. So uh, I'll get to 10. 10 is bigger. Now my current will be 15. Still, we don't update the result. Once again, my I pointer is going to be shifted. I'm at 50 now. The value is bigger than the previous. So we add 50. Our current will be 65. And now we can update our result. So this will be 65. And now we can't really go any further. So this is what we would return. So the nice thing about this solution is, as you can see, it just scans through the input once. We uh, reduce the time complexity from n squared to linear, and we don't need any extra data structures. So the space complexity is constant. Now let's code it up. So like I said, I'm going to have two variables. Current is initially going to be the first element. I think we're guaranteed that the array is going to be non-empty, so we can actually get away with doing this. And result is going to be the same. I could just set it to cur or the first element. It doesn't really matter. That's what we're going to end up returning, but not before we actually maximize it. So we're going to go like this, I in range length of nums. But that's not our starting point. We actually want to start at 1 and then go up until the end of the array. So just like that. The most important thing to do is the comparison. We want to compare uh, nums of i with nums of i minus 1. We want to make sure that this is the case, that the current element is bigger than the previous one. So the way I could code this up is something like this. I could say if else. If it's true, then we just add to current the element that we're looking at right now. If it's not true, then we could reset current to the current element that we're looking at, not including any of the previous values that we've seen. And then after we've done that, I think we could uh, update our result like this, try to maximize it and set it to the max of cur and itself. This will work. Let's give it a run. You can see it's pretty efficient. Can't really do much better than this. But if you prefer to write it without the if else, it's actually possible. You could do this. You could change this to the not. So kind of the negation. I could have made this like greater than or equal as well. But I'm just going to write it this way because I think this is also fine. And so if that was not the case, what we'd want to do is reset current, just like we did in the else case. But we could also actually be a little clever and set it to zero, because if we do that, then we can say we don't need an else statement and we could always take the current number and add it to cur like this. 
Now, this is really not an improvement over the previous solution. In some ways, I think this is less readable, but I think it's worth showing you because usually in the medium and hard problems, I always write code like this. So I think it's kind of worth knowing some of these like little clever tricks. So let me run this now. And you can see here, it also works. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.